Joseph Gumwalk was arrested, questioned, tried, and acquitted after the allegations against him were dropped in 1976. This was owing to his alleged connection with the Buka Soka Dimka Feld coup attempt that led to the assassination of Nigeria's third military ruler, General Moritala Ramat Mohamed. But was Joseph Gunwalk guilty as charged? Please watch till the end to find out. Remember to also leave your thoughts in comment section. Hello, 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 his plus. Welcome to another episode on his pool media. Gabriel here. Please be informed that we have discussed the Dimkaku as well as the trial of the culprit exhaustively in our previous videos. You can watch these videos after this. I will include the videos at the end of this video. Joseph Dechi Gomwo was from the Inga tribe of Angpang or Pang in present day Kanke local government area of Plateau State. He was born on April 13, 1935. He graduated with honors from the elite boys' secondary school, Gindiri, near Jos, where he excelled not only in academics but also in sports. Gunwalk went on to the University of Ibadan, where he earned a first class degree in zoology in 1961. Gunwalk then joined the prestigious Northern Region Civil Service, advancing to the rank of divisional officer in the province of Sadauna before transferring to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, where he eventually rose to the rank of Principal Assistant Secretary by February 1966. He was appointed to the Nigerian Police Force as Chief Superintendent of its Elite Special Branch after advanced training at Scotland Yard and the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI. Please take a moment to smash the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. Remember to also enable notification so you will be notified when we post new videos. Gunwalk had learned about the Northern Counter Coup, which was to climax in the Baden in July 1966. As a result, he alerted his boss Joseph Adiola, who was the then Commissioner of Police in Western Nigeria, to warn the Head of State and Supreme Commander General Johnson Thomas Aguironsi and his host, Lieutenant Colonel Francis Adekunle Fajui, of an oncoming insurrection. The police commissioner, on the other hand, would err on the side of caution because he was unable to warn Fadri and Aguironsi in time. Five days later, on August 4, 1966, Joseph Gunwalk led a team of police officers to a shallow grave outside the village of Lelopon on the outskirts of Ibadan to recover the bodies of the now murdered Aguironsi and Fadri. Gumwalk became a significant beneficiary of the coup that he almost foiled, if not for Adiola's prevarication, in May 1967. After the regions were divided into 12 states, the new head of state, Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, who was also his kinsman, named him as the military governor of Benue Plateau State. The Benue Plateau State would eventually be divided into Benue Plateau and Nasarawa states with capitals in Makodi, Jos, and Lafia, respectively. As governor, Joseph Gumwalk established the Nigerian Standard, a government-owned daily newspaper, in 1972. He was a visionary leader by many standards. The paper based in Jos, the capital city, has a daily readership of around 100,000 copies as of 2003. Joseph Gumwalk officially approached the Amadou Bello University Zaria with a request to establish a satellite campus in Jos. When Amadou Bello University refused to approve Gumwalk's request, the governor resorted to the University of Ibadan, which eventually opened a campus in Jos. In November 1971, the campus would officially change to the University of Jos. On Friday, February 13, 1976, General Moritala Mohammed, the head of state, was assassinated while right on his way to work in Lagos. The aftermath of the assassination has sparked a number of debates that have yet to be settled. On July 3, 2010, Major General John Obada, who was the president of the Special Military Tribunal that tried the alleged coup plotters in 1976, declared in an interview published on Vanguard newspaper that the Lieutenant Colonel B. L. Dimkaku was a very complicated thing because it was a coup within a coup. The general did not go into detail on why he feels it was a coup within a coup, but claimed that Dimka was driven by greed and gross indiscipline rather than ambition. Joseph Gumwalk was arrested, 
screen and tried as a result of this investigation and was acquitted with the allegations against him withdrawn, only to be rearranged, retried, and convicted under controversial circumstances. It is worthy of note that the military tribunal presided over by Major General John Obada, which had tried, discharged, and absorbed gun work, was disbanded. A new military tribunal was established, led by Brigadier General Pius Ere Mobo. The new tribunal overturned the former governor's acquittal and sentenced him to death. On May 15, 1976, Joseph Gumwalk was executed in Lagos, Nigeria's federal capital along with others. Minority officers from the Middle Belt were used as scapegoats this time. The friction between the officers of the Middle Belt and those from the far north resurfaced, and the coup investigation took proportions of wish hunting and the officers were convicted on the weakest or most circumstantial evidence, mostly relying on Dimka's uncorroborated testimony or confession. It was also established that most of the convicts were convicted on the basis of guilt by association. Until the court martial records of 1976 are declassified, Gumwalk will continue to be fondly remembered by his kinsmen. The rest is considered circumstantial and will remain so for a foreseeable period. But we would like to hear your thoughts on this. Was Gunwork guilty as charged? Please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and remember to subscribe and enable notification so you will not miss any of our future uploads. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.